I would like to welcome you to today's webinar. This webinar is part of our educational online event series brought to you by Hawkridge Systems and our partners in digital manufacturing. Our topic today, design for additive manufacturing, composite and metal for hybrid part design. How additive manufacturing changes the way we approach part design. My name is Robin Gonzalez, and in addition to being your host today, I manage the additive manufacturing sales for our strategic accounts here at Hawkridge Systems. Joining me today is an expert in 3D printers, John Bannon. John is a Mark Ford Senior Field Application Engineer with an expertise in composite and metal part design. For those of you new to Hawkridge, we've been providing engineering and manufacturing solutions to North American companies for over 20 years. As you can see, we have 21 offices and digital manufacturing labs across the country. In addition to products and services, we partner with the leading providers of engineering, manufacturing, and 3D printing solutions. So that is just a quick overview on Hawkridge. Now let's get to our topic today with John from Mark Forge. Thanks, Robin, for the great introduction. So today we're gonna to be talking about design for additive manufacturing, composite, and metal for hybrid part design. So I'm just gonna give a little more information about me. So as a senior field applications engineer, my mission is working with partners and companies to explore and transform product design and manufacturing with Mark Forged additive solutions. So the agenda today is to talk a little bit about the goal, Mark Forged milestones, touch on design for manufacturing and design for additive manufacturing. Then we'll get into composite for hybrid parts and metal and hybrid parts. And then at the end, we'll do a Q&A. So I'm really excited to be here today and I'm happy that you're here today too to learn about design for additive with Mark Forge printers so that you can use this information for the development of your own hybrid parts. So when you think of Mark Forge today, what do you think of? Well, I think of our story, where we started back in 2013 and what we've accomplished in the last seven years. And there's really no other company that has a more incredible industrial product line and leads in the development of best in class hardware, software, and materials. So it's a really exciting time to be a Mark Forge customer. So what is hybrid? What is a hybrid part? A hybrid part is a combination of two or more objects or elements of different origin combined into a new independent object. The Mark Forge can print with metal, composite, and plastics, and our 3D printed parts can be combined to leverage the strengths of multiple additive manufacturing processes to improve part performance. While many of our customers are using Mark Forge technology to create standalone parts and fixtures, Many are also combining them with varying elements such as hardware and other fabricated parts to create hybrid parts. Our customers tell us they're seeing improvements in these areas when combining composite and metal printing to create hybrid parts. So you can use the full range of materials to optimize your parts performance. Leverage metal for its wear resistance, hardness, and high stiffness and strength. Then focus on composite printing technology when you need your parts to be lightweight and have higher energy absorption, for example. Composites are also a great solution when you need to print a very large part that can be printed very quickly. Combining metal and composite components together is done by printing parts on different machines. So print plastic and composite parts on our composite printer line and metal parts on our, our metal X system. So this hybrid part on screen provides the strength, stiffness, and lightweight characteristics that exceed the overall performance of the customer's original requirements. Getting to the point of designing for hybrids all starts with understanding design for additive. But before we talk about design for additive manufacturing, let's first touch on design for manufacturing, because this is a term you're probably a little bit more familiar with. It is the general engineering practice of designing products for manufacturing process. Design for manufacturing allows potential problems to be fixed during this phase which is the least expensive place to address them. So design for manufacturing processes have a much longer history than design for additive manufacturing. And when you're designing for CNC, welding, casting, injection molding, you're designing for a process and there are parameters that matter on the design side that are critical to its success. And that same methodology goes along with design for additive manufacturing. And if you're not familiar with the term, it's a term that you'll hear extensively as you explore 3D printing. With 3D printing, you have to understand the capabilities of the printers and how to design for those printers to achieve successful printed parts without trial and error. And that's where Mark Forge Design for Additive Guides come into play. So we provide composite and metal printer specific DFAM guides that provide information and recommendations to enable users to design parts that can be optimized for an environment, an application, end use parts, or for a specific load case example. So keep in mind that design for additive 
manufacturing, just like design for manufacturing, is technology specific. There's not all there's not an all encompassing design for additive guy that applies to everything. And the reason is that there is a whole landscape of additive solutions and all kinds of different technology with different choices and different capabilities. So it's pretty easy to see why design for additive is technology specific. Mark Far Forged falls into the FDM category with their trifecta of leading technology in plastics, composites, and metal offering a true end-to-end -end solution. So MarkForged has options for designing with and routing fiber throughout a printed part in our composite design guide and how metal parts should be designed to prevent collapse during our ADAM process. ADAM stands for Atomic Diffusion Additive Manufacturing, a process that our system uses that we'll get into in a little bit. So let's talk about design for composites and metal to showcase printer-specific technology capabilities. So I'm gonna briefly talk about DFAM and the benefits of each printer technology and how that relates to developing hybrid parts. So you need a good understanding of the technology to showcase the benefits of designing for hybrid parts. So Mark Forge composite printers feature a strengthened dual nozzle print system that supports continuous carbon fiber, Kevlar, high strength, high temperature fiberglass and fiberglass reinforcement, plus also offers in part laser inspection scans combined that with the printer technology and the DFAM composite guide to provide basic information on the volume of the printers, part dimensions, unsupported overhang angles, and grade features, bosses. The list goes on. It's pretty numerous. And then we can also transition into fiber reinforcement. What are the basics? What are, what's a deep dive into the reinforcement of the materials? What kind of materials do we offer? What types of fiber reinforcement can you provide in the part? How to use the fiber? And so much more. And we're gonna cover a little bit of that in this webinar, but these documents are available in this presentation as well as at the end of the presentation for download. So in case you're not familiar with our composite printing technology, let's start there. So the CFF represents continuous filament fabrication. It's a process that lays down continuous strands of high strength composite fibers like carbon fiber, in this case within our FFF onyx or fused filament fabrication. Onyx is a Mark Forge nylon material with short strand chopped carbon fiber in the filament. And the combination of both of these materials, the carbon fiber and the onyx, provides aluminum 6061 T6 level tensile strength and stiffness to your part. So to take advantage of the CFF process, you'll design your part in CAD, import an STL file into our software called Iger, which is our fleet data management configuration and slicing tool. And in Iger, you'll add a few additional options to configure where the continuous fiber reinforcement is positioned and routed. And then you're going to send that file to one of Mark Forge CFF capable printers. So think about plastic as concrete and fiber as rebar. You are creating an incredibly strong part using plastic and fiber. And our printers will autonomously build the parts switching back and forth between printing plastic or continuous fiber as needed, producing a strong ready to use part right off the print bed. So here we're viewing an internal part structure of an end effector in our software called Iger. So in this example, at the bottom, you can see that I'm actually selecting a group of layers from the printing progression bar, and I'm selecting the ability to add fiber to those specific layers in our part. So we can fill the entire part with fiber, or we can add fiber to specified layers. It's user's choice. And users also can choose between different types of fiber, either concentric fiber or isotropic fiber. And our guides go through the details and the specifics of each one and the benefits of those. So for the end effector, we're actually using concentric fiber fill in the center as well as the ends of the part. And this provides strength, rigidity, and prevents twisting torsion forces. And it's also really great for compression. And the benefits of printing with fiber is that you get metal strength. That's the first one. The combination of strength of the plastic and the continuous fiber strands woven throughout the part. Another benefit is the durability. Reinforcing fibers can vastly increase the lifetime of a part. And when you want your part to be optimized, you can tailor a part strength profile exactly for its application by adding continuous fibers where strength is needed most. So in a short amount of time here, you've been exposed to the highlights, benefits, and capabilities of Mark Forge composite printers. Now we can take this and then leverage this information to go one step further and start creating hybrid parts. And there's lots of reasons to create hybrid parts. You can create large, larger parts and assemblies, offer supplementary properties. You can speed up the introduction of new products or enhance existing tools and equipment. 
and even simplif simplification of processes to reduce cost versus traditional manufacturing. So MarkForge customer, or Tsilla, and their team built this lifting tool on the left to lift engine pistons in the field and at their factories. And the original tool on the right was machined out of a solid billet of solid steel. So they were able to design this lifting tool using reinforced Mark Forged Onyx with carbon fiber and metal and hardware to create a composite metal hybrid assembly. They were, and it's pretty significant that they were able to reduce the total weight by 75% compared to the solid steel tool. They saved 100,000 euros on tooling just for this one project. The hybrid part has a maximum testing lifting capacity of 960 kilograms and a certifi certified lifting capacity of 240. So they have a built-in factor of safety of four. So we generally see that there are four types of hybrid parts that we usually interact with. So the first one is composite composite hybrids. Leverage separate fiber reinforced printed geometries combined into one part to provide strength, durability, and resist loads and forces in multiple directions and orientations. Two composite hybrid uh, hardware hybrids include hardware that's embedded into your printed part. Hardware can be an assortment of different items, geometries, and materials. It just doesn't have to be metal. And then you have composite metal hybrids, leverage mass-produced metal hardware or metal printed hardware in combination with composite parts to provide exceptional durability. And then you have metal metal hybrids. So leverage traditional subtractive manufacturing with off-the-shelf metal components and printed metal parts to create hybrid parts that are faster and cheaper to produce than traditional manufacturing alone. So first is our composite composite hybrid. So here's an example of a printed table using multiple composite printed parts able to withstand an additive printer and a much heavier object such as a person standing on this object that was put together in multiple pieces. I'm also working with several companies right now that are using a combination of all the capabilities of the printers and splitting parts to force advanced design geometries, increase printability and strengthen their parts. And there's been a significant interest and in innovation in how engineers can leverage these capabilities across their unique manufacturing environments. So our composites guide goes in and through how to split up a part. The actual splitting of the part is done in your CAD tool. Mark Forge Iger software does not provide this type of functionality, but we walk you through it every step of the way. We tell you how to do it and why it's important. And some of the main advantages are it allows designers to achieve desired strength in multiple axes, gives better dimensional accuracy and specific features. You're gonna reduce your supports, which leads to decreased print time, faster time to market, or faster end parts for your customers. And you can also incorporate clever design and strat reinforcement strategies to allow for greater strength in multiple areas of your parts. So when we're working with additive and thinking about printing parts, there are some things that you just shouldn't print, such as COTS, or what stands for components off the shelf. You shouldn't print parts designed for conventional methods. You shouldn't print mass-produced parts with simple geometry. And because it usually does not deliver the same types of results that you'd expect if you try to print the cots. So a printed version of a cot may not have the same strength, durability, or rigidity, and the results won't be the same. So if you do print a component off the shelf, you could run into additional problems. You're gonna, it's gonna take longer to print those parts. So you're, you have, end up with higher costs, longer lead times, and potentially unusable products. Instead, use components off the shelf as hardware in your designs as part of the printing process and reinforcement within the part. I've touched on this a couple of times now, but you might be wondering, well, how can you use hardware within my printed part? So with MarkForge printers, you can actually schedule a pause into the print to remove the build plate tray from the printer, replace components off the shelf like nuts into your 3D printed part, and then print over the top of the hardware encapsulating the hardware into the design. So the build plate has, is designed with a kinematic coupling that's accurate to within 10 micron of the original position. So this reduces your costs, shortens your lead time, and ensures usable end parts for your customers. So composites with hardware are the most common type of hybrid parts. If you've ever added hardware to a printed part, then you've created a hybrid part. And MarkForge has many, many types of examples. The most common is heat set 
threaded inserts in parts. But you can also incorporate pins, blocks, bolts, bearings, nuts, sheet metal, weights, magnets is a popular one, and the list goes on. And this allows for a greater diversification of part function, increased life use of your existing parts, strengthening of parts, as well as increased iterations for design and modularity of those parts. So threads and inserts are the most common hardware component that we see with 3D printed parts. Instead of printing or tapping threads into plastic, add a sheet metal, add a uh, metal heat set insert where you need your threads. These inserts get pressed in using a soldering iron to reflow the plastic around the part for local isotropic strength. And with a simple tool tip for your soldering iron, you can insert heat set inserts into the part. Inserts are stronger and last longer than the printed or tapped plastic threads and eliminates the possibility for cross-threading. So we kind of take a look at this example down here. So the smallest thread that we can print in plastic is an M3. And you can see the threads here on the right, but you can see how they were worn away on the left. Engagement and disengagement with printed threads at an M3 size, it might be just a couple engagement disengagement. So they're gonna wear pretty fast. And the same goes for a hel uh, helicoil. While this is the next best in strength, it's also gonna see the wear of the threads pretty quickly. This is an encapsulated nut as if the print was paused and then we added the nut and then we printed on the over it. And then this is a representation of adding a feature in CAD to have more of a, a lock nut on the backside of the printed part in order to engage the thread of the screw. And then the last one is the heat set insert, which is going to by far give you the best capability um, with engagement and disengagement and using threaded parts in your printed parts. So drive to hybridize your parts. Custom tooling drives faster innovation and hybridizing parts provides great solutions that just weren't possible before. Hybridized parts that um, provide inherently stronger uh, parts, especially when designed correctly. You can also parallelize manufacturing of printed parts to produce assemblies quicker if you have additional printers to use, particularly for large assembly requirements. And you can use hybrid design to enhance existing parts and manufacturing processes. So composite hardware hybrids, so with high wear parts typically only experience a small isolated area of wear. You can use dowel pins and keyway stock to act as superior wear surfaces that can offer significant cost reductions. And with multiple printed parts, alignment can become an issue. And this can be resolved with press and pins, dowel pins to line up the components and then screw the, everything together with heat set inserts and bolts and nuts and screws. But let's take a look at the first example of a wear surface as a design example from one of our customers. So this example is from Dixon Valve. The valve's internal threads are interacting with this 3D printed part and causing heavy wear in a very isolated area on the print. And these parts need to be replaced more often leading to maintenance and downtime. So essentially, they could only get about a month out of the tool before they needed to change it. So the challenge was to extend the life of the jaw and retain fast iteration. So what could be done? So the solution is to use COTS. They modified their design and added a couple features that could accommodate steel dowel pins that can be press fitted into the part and act as a contact service between the internal thread ID and the printed part. And this is a very simple, inexpensive and reliable way to easily create a hybrid part. But what if the jaw pressure causes the pins to damage the ID threads? Well, we can control that with CAD and, and the contact with the design and placement of the part that's ideal that dials in exactly where the pins should sit to interact with the internal ID thread. So with 15 minutes of CAD, you can have several possible iterations to test out, reducing the point contact force. And the result here was an onyx and Kevlar reinforced part with steel dowel pins that does not wear down the pin or the thread. And the solution allows Dixon valve to eliminate the need to replace the printed part, the, the printed hybrid part. 
So two weeks ago now, Mark Forge created a 100 plus industrial application site to showcase how our customers are using Mark Forge printers and, um, and the amazing products they're actually creating. And most of them are actually hybrid parts. So I've been showcasing and we're gonna talk about several of the hybrid examples, the four hybrid examples that we're gonna go through today. Some customers like ERM Automation are using a combination of printing composite robot end effectors with hardware, metal, and pneumatic systems and electrical systems. So Rainbow Technology Systems are using specialty hardware for a print alignment jig for screen printing. And Paddington Dynamics builds a seven axis robot that, has, that can achieve 50 micron accuracy at each of the seven joints. And they use hardware electrical motion systems that make up the entirety of their robotic assembly. So there's lots of different ways that you can create hybrid parts with composites. So let's go ahead and take a look, a little look at metal now. So our MetalX design guide provides information about all aspects of the MetalX system and the stages of printing. So we go from printing to washing to centering. So if you're not familiar with this process, let's go ahead and run through it quickly. So you start off with a CAD file and you upload it into our software called Iger, which it ties all of our hardware together across our ecosystem. So Iger, again, is a, has a built-in fleet data management tool. It's a project slicing and configuration tool and allows you to manage your organization's printed parts library. And security is a top priority at Mark Forge. And we're the only 3D printing company who's achieved an ISO 27001 certification which is an internationally recognized third-party validation of our security and control systems so that your data is secure and only available to you. So in Iger, you upload your file, you configure it, you slice it, you send it to a MetalX system to be printed. Our MetalX printer is an FFF printer. It's a fused filament fabrication, similar to an FDM printer. We took the same technology from our composite printer, fifth generation uh, printing system for metal. So we start off with a powdered metal that we bind with a wax and a polymer to create spools of metal filament. The spools in use are stored in a temperature controlled chamber and fed into the print head from the top. The metal spools on the left in this prints your parts, your raft and your support material. The ceramic spools on the right in this prints ceramic. And the ceramic acts as a release layer that separates the parts from the supports and the raft. So the ceramic, has a temperature higher than the highest temperature the sinter can get to, which ensures that the ceramic remains brittle and easy to separate from the part, the raft, and the supports after the part has been sintered. So you have a ready to use part right out of the sinter. So once your part is done printing, it goes into the wash. So our wash, this is wash one. So the wash station is essentially the size of a dishwasher in your kitchen. And it uses a fluid called Option SF79. Essentially, it's like a degreaser. The, the, fl the fluid dissolves the wax in the print from the outside in. So the time it takes to wash the part will depend on the geometry of the part and how it's printed, whether it's printed with solid, whether it's printed with a triangular infill, how big is the part. Our software will tell you how long your part has to wash for based on the cross-sectional area of that part. So once the part is washed and dried, it's then ready to go into one of our center furnaces. So Mark Forge has two center furnaces. The furnaces both use metal specific ramp profiles. So you load your parts in, the center ramps up and burns out the polymer out of the part, then ramps up again to 85% of the metal's melt temperature using a process called ADAM, Atomic Diffusion Additive Manufacturing. It's based on our traditional MIM technology, metal injection molding. So at which point the grains, the microscopic grains of the metal in your printed part diffuse across boundaries to provide you with a true dense isotropic metal part that achieves a near net shape and is ready to use right out of the center. So center one has the capacity to fit small low volume parts and center two, which started shipping in August of 2019 can fit four times as many parts as center one. And essentially you can half the cost per part. Both centers have carbon free retorts and use an argon argon hydrogen warming gas. And the hydrogen is a safe and inert level of 2.93%. So you configure, you print, wash, center. And these are the steps that the Mark Forge Metal X system uses. And these are the steps that you would go through in order to create your own metal parts. 
So now that you know how the system works, let's touch on the metals that you can use today in our system. So we have a metal portfolio, and there are six engineering grade metals that you can use and print with right now. These are the, this is the order in which they were developed. So we started with 17.4 pH stainless steel, then we moved to, into H13 tool steel, which is a general tool steel. Then we developed A2 and then D2. And the tool steels can actually be heat treated in our center one. It adds an additional 11 to 13 hours onto the end of the uh, center process, but you'll get an increased hardness, Rockwell hardness with those parts. And we can also print in Canel 625 and we just released pure copper back in February of this year. So while there are a ton of amazing things that you can print, just like with composites, cots or components off the shelf aren't really ideal to print. You can certainly customize and design your own bolts, nuts, screws, washers, everything, but those components are still much cheaper just by getting them from a hardware store. Pennies on the dollar compared to what it's actually gonna cost you to print the same geometry. So pressure, high pressure vessels are something you'd wanna stay away from as well and then sheet metal parts. Don't print thin wall that have the potential to easily fall over during our center, sintering cycle. It's not ideal. But while sheet metal parts aren't ideal to print, printing die and forming tools that bend sheet metal are, like this example. So let's take a look at well-designed metal X designed for additive parts. So this is an end effector gripper from one of our customers called Lean Machine. And it's a very well-designed part for our metal system. So there are many design considerations, whether you're developing your parts as a metal part to be used as a component in a hybrid part, or you want to review our guidelines to help you optimize your metal part for the printing process. Our process from printing to center has a minimum cycle time of two days, but it's very geometry dependent. So number one, Overhangs. An overhang is a feature that has no material beneath it and refers to the angle between the horizontal build plate and an overhang feature. 17.4 requires a 45 degree or more that doesn't require supports. Whereas copper, it's 40 degrees. And in Inconel, it's 50 degrees. So our design guide has all this information in it to help you customize and tailor your design specifically. So while the supports are, are critical or maybe critical for that feature, it also adds print time, which could be something that you can weigh the benefits of. Number two, the graphic on the left represents a poorly designed feature. While the angle is more than 45 degrees and doesn't require supports necessarily, in our sintering process at temperature, we induce a, a the heat induces a clay-like state that makes the part malleable, and that feature has the possibility to fall over. So the right image, represents a well-designed feature that matches very nicely with the feature in the actual part. Number three, bed adhesion. So although we show the part in an upright position, we're actually gonna print the, the part on its left side to maximize greater surface area on the print bed. It helps with um, minimizing supports and bed adhesion. And then we also have critical dimensions. So depending on the dimensions that are critical for your printer, if you can lay them in a plane parallel to the build plate, you'll have higher precision in the XY. And then five, small chamfers were added to both sides of the part to maintain symmetry. So the bottom edge of your part may splay out during sintering, adding a half to one millimeter chamfer on the bottom edges of the part will help prevent splayed edges, especially on features like holes and channels. And then lastly, you're gonna to wanna to batch process parts to be printed. The more parts you can pack into your sintering run, the lower the cost per part will be. Because you have to factor in the, the metal cost for the part to be printed, the wash cost, as well as the sintering cost, which all adds up to a per part cost. And there are many other design considerations that are available in the design guide that you guys should check out. So both the composite and the metal, Markforge Metal X design guide are available, again, in this presentation to download. So best fit applications for Metal X. Printing and tooling fixtures, definitely a great application. Shortens the lead time, reduces part costs, frees up your machining bandwidth, and you can easily print very complex geometries with additive. 
Printing metal prototypes often opens up the possibility for additional design ideas and iterations, allows companies to get to market much faster and eliminates waste and scrap. And then replacing, printing replacement parts, machine parts, die cast parts, significantly reduces long lead times, reduces part costs, and mitigates unplanned downtime. So let's take a look at some of these examples that I'm just talking about. So here, reduce long lead times and high part costs by printing sand and investment cast parts, small, large, and medium sizes. Dixon Valve started printing metal end effectors for moving valve fittings from one station to another. Initially started with metal before they designed and iterated to get to a hybrid part. But this allowed Dixon to iterate quickly and then select the right materials for the right environment and application. Customers make custom tooling which fits existing hand tools and allows for quicker iteration design cycles and changes. And it's easy to 3D print uh, functional metal prototypes which are low volume or one-off parts. You can also print parts quickly and replenish inventory for small parts and use potential parts for hybrid part designs as well. We also have the ability to print larger parts, which nor, uh, normally have a you know, really high cost and lead time and can be replaced with printed parts at a fraction of the cost. So in this case, these are large copper shanks for a global automotive supplier. And the Metal X is also really great for lower volume, higher margin parts like investment and die cast parts. So again, a customer of ours, Lean Machine, has invested in both composite and metal and has been able to use design for additive guides to further combine the best of metal and fiber reinforced parts to create some really interesting designs. So on the right, they built a carbon fiber reinforced composites with hardware and metal to create a composite metal, composite hardware assembly for bending tooling. And on the left, they initially designed and printed metal and, and end effectors instead of having them traditionally manufactured. So let's kind of let's just take a look at this example and the design iterations and the cost savings that they actually went through. So this is a pretty interesting example because they saw a significant reduction in time by printing the all metal part first because it initially cost them their machine part $434. It was a 28 day lead time and 300 grams is what the part weighed. So by printing in metal in four days, they had a part in hand for $64 and it weighed half that cost. But then we were able to help them get to a hybrid version, which in this case, that $31, it wraps up into $8 for the metal tip, $23, essentially $22 for the composite that's reinforced with carbon fiber. And there's enough carbon fiber in there, and that's why the cost goes up for this composite part. And then they added a couple cents worth of pins to put the two together. So this is a significant game changer for companies that are looking to understand what they can do with additive technology for their manufacturing environments. A good composite hybrid, metal hybrid, in this case is a custom wrenches. You can print Metal X tool inserts specifically to be used with fiber reinforced parts. You can increase the strength, the wear resistance, and hardness of composite parts by using printed metal. It's also great for conformal wear pads and surfaces without the needing to post process because parts are ready to use right out of the center. But you can post process the parts just like you would normal metal parts. Another composite metal hybrid. In this case, we're, this part was designed to be a CNC two bending die, reinforced with fiber and components off the shelves using bolts, nuts, metal bar stiffeners. So when you're printing in composites away from the print bed as the part gets taller, your parts are weakest in that Z axis. So to leverage strong parts, certain applications may be necessary, like a bending tool, for example, to strengthen the parts in the, that weakest direction. So in CAD, you would add through holes for your bolts and regions that needed a high Z strength, and also add areas for features for the nuts to go, and then reinforce, add reinforcement fiber under the bolt heads to distribute that force throughout the part. And you can even use shoulder bolts to also resist shear loads. So it's these guidelines and our DFAM guides that will help increasing a part's strength 
extensively to withstand forces that would traditionally break 3D print apart. In this metals with hybrid example, the cam assembly, which allows the grinder to create the perfect profile was the target for this particular use case. Traditionally, this part was machined out of a single billet of steel. And when Stanley Black & Decker partnered with Mark Forge to create a 3D printed part, an assembly was proposed which levered common off-the-shelf items such as the key stock and shaft. And then the, the cam component, the complex cam component could be 3D printed and to complete the assembly. So we're able to move from a single part that was going to be printed, rather, a single part that was going to be machined to an assembly meant that Stanley Black & Decker could spend less time machining and devote more of those resources to higher value work. So in the image on the left for this composite metal hybrid, this was a design for a customer for either a composite metal hybrid or a metal metal hybrid, providing a variety of different options for this customer to explore. So you can replace the steel V blocks with either metal or composite printed parts. And the image on the right actually shows that the two steel V blocks were replaced with composites reinforced with fiber. And then the inserts highlighted in yellow on the left were actually printed out of 17 4 stainless steel to be used to hold the billet of material in this particular orientation. So this offered a significant advantage instead of traditionally machining everything out of metal. So to summarize what we've been talking about today, so when you're thinking about additive and hybridization, choose to hybridize parts when there are advantages of properties of multiple materials that are necessary for ideal function of a part or an assembly, when printer farms or fleets of printers are available to support quicker print times to, to get to your final assembly, and when strong parts need to be made even that much more strong. And choose, don't choose hybrids when the operational specs or environments don't allow for certain types of parts, materials, or geometries and don't hybridize parts when tolerance stacks are critical and full parts cannot fit within the print bed. So we've explored a lot of information today and I hope that I've shown the value and strength of how MarkForge can be used to further its own capabilities by combining our technologies together to create hybrid parts. So MarkForge recently came out with this 100 plus additive trends report and an application library to showcase all of our use cases that customers are using our printers with today. And all the examples that I talked about today are in this presentation that you can check out. So it's available at markforge.com additive manufacturing movement. Really appreciate your time today. Thanks for listening. And please let me know if you have any questions. Well, thanks, John. That was some great information. This is going to give you an idea of the depth of our solutions that we offer here at Hawkridge. From design to data management, simulation and stress testing, all the way through prototyping and production. We have the software, services, and expertise to help you achieve your goals. And we love challenges. So let us know what's on your mind, and we'll do our very best to help you solve the problems. And I wanted to thank John Bannon again for this wonderful presentation. And uh, let us know, again, if you have any more questions that I can send his way. And talk to you soon, everybody.